I got a little surprise that I want to bring in for Coach Shipley. Yes. Hey, <laughs> Jackson, how you doing this morning? What's up? I'm good. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? And we we weren't going to tell your pops we we're bringing you on uh, <laughs> Thursday, but uh, hey, Jackson, we've been we talk about all these receivers, but we wanted to talk to a, a big time receiver, man. I mean, I, I want to get your initial just. What's your reaction was to Xavier Worthy and A.D. Mitchell's performance in the combine? Oh, man. First, well, let's start off with A.D. Mitchell. Uh, first, I was I think I was probably uh, in line with most people were pretty surprised by A.D. Mitchell's 4-3. Uh, yes. I, I knew he was I knew he w could move pretty good. Um, I, I watch a lot when I go to the games. I watch a lot of just how savvy route runners are and um, just their fluidity in and out of routes and how they're able to, to decelerate and accelerate out of routes. And uh, you could tell all year that, that Adnan Mitchell was really uh, was, could do a really good job of that. I didn't know that he had quite the straight line speed. So it was, uh, it was pretty awesome to see him put up the numbers that he did and you know what he can do on the field. You know, he can, he can make the contested catches. Uh, he's got, He's got really strong hands. He's gonna go up and he's gonna go up and make a lot of those contested catches that um, he's shown really throughout his career, not just at UT. Uh, so that that was really awesome. I think he is gonna vault himself, you know, probably up. I would assume at least somewhere close to the first round if he's not in the back end of the first round. And then Xavier Worthy. Uh, I don't think anyone was surprised that he hit a four two, but to to run the fastest one ever. I mean, what a what an awesome. Awesome thing, not just for him, but for the whole world to witness. And and as you as a UT fan, it gives you some pride there. Hey, now to the fun part. So I, my dad was a coach, so I grew up a ball boy on the sidelines. I assume you did too, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so when your dad was mad at the ref, did he ever just walk down and kind of like knock the ball out of your hand or do anything like that? And kind of – did you were you ever involved at the uh, in the game where – Pops was mad at the ref or anything. Do you have any great stories from, from back in the day? Because that's what I'm here for. I better keep my mouth shut on this one. <laughs> no, no, I, my, my dad, my dad was just always a hundred percent in. And that's the thing I remember growing up. Um, a lot of people don't realize the age difference between Jordan and I, and we're actually six and a half years apart. So when Jordan graduated high school, I was only in fifth grade. And a lot of people just don't realize the age gap there. So I was always the the younger brother, the one that was, you know, I was on the sidelines, but I was on the sidelines with a, a couple of my real young, el technically still elementary school buddies. And watching my dad, uh, just the passion that he coached with and everything he did was uh, with intensity and with focus and just 100% in. So whether that was uh, coaching and calling plays or whether that was getting after the refs, he did it 100%. I got a question for the both of you. And I, I remember, you know, Bob, when you were coaching in Brownwood, Jackson, you were there and I'd go over there to see y'all. But and I know y'all had lots of moments together, but is there a moment that stood out on the football field, you know, as a father-son combo duo, whatever you want to say, that really sticks out more than any other? Ooh. Well, I would say for, for me, uh, first of all, I, I would just – I'm somewhat of a homer. But uh, I, I think that Jackson is probably the most uh, underrated receiver to ever play at Texas. Uh, I mean, we played in some, you know, uh, with a lot of different quarterbacks uh, in a not great time in the history of our program and still wind up being a third leading receiver in the history of the program. That's that's you don't just do that. You know, obviously, there's been thousands of receivers at Texas and for for Jackson, I always wish he would have had, and really the same thing in high school. Jordan had the same quarterback, Stephen McGee, his sophomore, junior, yeah. senior year. And, uh, you know, Jackson uh, wound up breaking his collarbone his, his junior year and missed the first five games. And then our starting quarterback uh, broke his leg the week before Jackson came back. And so he never got to play with his starting quarterback uh, until his senior year in high school. And, uh, but, uh, the, the funnest time that I had with Jackson probably was when we played Stephenville in Brownwood and they had wiped up the field with us uh, a couple of years prior to that. 
And uh, the year before that, uh, Jackson didn't get to play in that game, and our, our quarterback got hurt. But um, we came in and and uh, and beat him pretty handily, and that was that was an awful lot of fun. What about you, Jackson? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good experience, just with the the uh, this rivalry there that goes back between. For those that don't know, I mean Brownwood and Stephenville go way way back, and only being an hour apart from one another, it's it's a pretty pretty violent rivalry throughout the years. And so to be able to be a part of that was was awesome, especially having not been a part of it my junior year being injured. So that was great. I think. Um, Probably, honestly, my favorite memory was we played Graham my junior year and got to play against my old my old pal Case McCoy, and uh, Brad was coaching on the other sidelines and just kind of the everything had built up for for years on that. I mean, Case and I grew up probably first or second grade, you know, throwing throwing passes at the ACU football games in Abilene, and uh, so just to to go through that and then to be be at the games with our brothers throughout the years. I mean, we'd sit we'd sit in the stands together, um, you know, for years before this game. So just it was really cool to get to experience that. And then the way that that game went down was it just felt it was just a really awesome experience. It was a DQ big game of the week and everything. So I think just to have that experience with my dad and not only with my dad, I know it's not a it's not as fun of a memory for Case and Brad probably. <laughs> there but for for the shipleys it was a good weekend i, I that's the one where y'all won like 28 to 27 uh, wasn't it i was that uh, it was a it was a, a blocked it was a blocked field goal at the end to win it <laughs> no a block extra point or a blocked extra point sorry yeah, yeah. A block extra point case mccoy led him in an unbelievable last minute drive the length of the field literally the length of the field scored and then uh we had uh, just a freak athlete, Derek Longoria, broke through and 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 uh, blocked the extra point to to seal the win for us. It was it was a lot of fun. It, it was awesome. And I will say this too. I mean, that's that was my first experience with Case in a you know in a real live with pads on football setting, and I just remember walking away from that game thinking Case had so much grit, and he uh, I mean he battled till the very end, and he. He played his tail off, and just the the leadership qualities that he showed throughout that whole, especially the whole back half of that game, was pretty pretty awesome to witness. And they went on, and Brad coached them up to to go all the way and uh, played the state championship that year. So they had a, a really awesome team, and I think we may have just stole one from them there. I think they they may have been the better team. I don't know, but uh, it was fun to get to watch them. And we have a very important question in the chat from uh, from the people in the comments. So we got to get your answer on this because I don't know it. Blake, can you pull that one up from Bobby Petronic? Oh, yeah, here we go. What was Jackson's favorite pass that he completed as a college football player? <laughs> <laughs> this a oh, man. A thousand percent. Well, well tell the whole story about your history. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, I may have told this before. I don't know, but. Uh, when I was in when I was in high school, that junior year, like Dad was saying, we had a bunch of injuries. Um, our starting quarterback, who was really good, was was injured, and backup quarterback tears his knee up. So we had to take a third. We had to take a a receiver that had never played quarterback before, and basically just throw him in there. We had nobody else. There was nobody, and uh, so he was playing quarterback. So we threw in some packages here and there for me to do some wildcat stuff, and. Um, I had an okay arm. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't great, but I think in my high school career, I think I threw three passes and two were interceptions. <laughs> so, but but Coach Harson called me after he got hired, and uh, he first thing he said on the phone was, "Are you ready to throw some? Are you ready to throw some touchdown passes?" I was like, "Man, this he must not know much about my experience with quarterback." <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, you know, just getting some opportunities to to uh, redeem myself a little bit in college was great. And Coach Harson was, you know, people say what they want about Coach Harson. He was a, definitely a very creative mind. And especially as an offensive coordinator, he um, he always had a lot of belief in me. And, you know, as a player, that is something that, you know, it, it does a lot for a player to know that their offensive coordinator believes in them. 
and and that their coaches believe in them. And so he gave me an opportunity to to get to do some kind of out of the box type stuff. And uh, my favorite one though was definitely the one at Texas A and M, the one to Blaine Irby for a touchdown there. That that will be a, probably a pretty core memory of mine for a long time. There you go. Hey, I've had about three people text me since you've been on. They they all had the same question. Talk because Xavier Worthy was on uh, Sports Center yesterday and talked about playing in the Steve Sarkeesian offense and how that prepares him uh, for the NFL. I want your perspective, want kind of your thoughts on watching Steve Sarkeesian's offense, being a receiver that had over fifty catches three straight years at Texas, I believe um, that was. But yeah, kind of your thoughts, what you've seen from Sar- Steve Sarkeesian at the wide receiver position, and just your general thoughts on that. Uh, first, I'll say Coach Sarkeesian, uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge Sarkeesian fan. I think, I think everything he stands for, not just the X's and O's, I, I love the way that he carries himself. I love the way that he approaches the media. I love the way he treats people. Just everything about Coach Sarkeesian and the way he handles and, and steers the ship, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. So we'll start there. And then secondly – uh, as far as just the the way that he schemes up teams, and the way that he puts players in the right positions, and uh, has just a little, uh, he has a lot of opportunities for receivers to to make plays, a lot of opportunities for quarterbacks to to find the open guy. Um, for me, I think, I mean, I would have absolutely loved to have played in an offense like an offense like his. Um, it seems like that he always has different route concepts that somebody's going to be open one way or another. It's a lot of times it's it's going to fall to the quarterback being able to see it, you know, and sometimes as a quarterback, you're only one person with one set of eyes. And so you're not going to see every single thing, but I think that what coach Sark has done a really good job of is preparing his quarterbacks to, to know where the open reads are going to be versus different looks. And uh, one of the things that many people that are, that are listening to this may not realize is that when you're in high school, there's just not a whole lot of defensive coverage recognition from quarterback and especially from a receiver position, but we'll just, we'll just leave it at quarterback. So when you get to college, there's not a whole lot of quarterbacks that can actually tell you in real life situation when, you know, when you're playing at game speed, they can tell you what, not only what the uh, defensive coverage is on the back end, but what they may be rolling to, you know, at the snap of the ball. And sometimes defenses, they'll hold that until the last second and then they'll roll coverages. And so I think coach, well, I don't think, I know coach Sarkeesian prepares his quarterbacks really well for just what they're getting on the back end, different recognition stuff as a receiver. Um, you, you don't typically have just a ton of stuff um, in college, at least that you're having to know as far as, you know, every single coverage, you're going to need to know your base coverages. You're going to know cover zero, cover one, two, three, and four. And then as you get into the NFL, there's, you know, there are very, there's a hundred coverages or variations of different coverages that branch off of that. But at the end of the day, I think those guys are, they have a scheme that is unmatched. I think coach Sark is on the cutting edge of everything uh, offensive offensively. And I think that he puts guys in the right place. I think he recruits the right kind of players for his offense. Um, And I, I was this kind of player where, you know, I wasn't necessarily the fastest guy ever, but I think there's a lot of value in in someone who who you can count on to to make a contested catch or to be in the right spot, um, but also to to win one on bat one on one battles with safeties and with linebackers and and stuff like that. And I think that Whittington was that perfect guy this year. He's certainly got the speed, but just to have uh you know have a guy like Ad Mitchell on the outside that's a burner that can go make the contested play, and then you've got worthy on the other side that can you know rip past the defense and then you've got a guy like Whittington that can find the open spaces and can win the one-on-one battles in the middle I think uh, coach Sark just he knew the strengths of each of his guys and I think that's one of his biggest attributes as a coach is just knowing who his players are and then getting full full buy-in from his players and I know dad can probably speak to this more than I can but I think there's a lot to be said about culture there's a lot to be said about a coach really actually knowing his players and not putting on a facade. And you see that right now when you hear these guys do interviews at the combine and you hear these things that they don't have to say the things that they're saying to, to praise coach Sark. They don't, there's nobody that's telling them that they have to do that. They're doing that because it's real. 
and it's authentic and it's genuine and they saw it and they felt it and it meant a lot to them and they know where this program is headed and all you have to do when you want to know the nature of a program is you you listen to guys that have you know that that are leaving the program or guys you know that that don't have to say certain things and it's pretty telling when they say things that that tell about the culture of the program and the the leadership that's there Jackson, one thing that I wanted to ask you last time you were on and we just didn't have time and we'll, this will be the last one, then we'll let you go. I know you, you're busy, but can we get your thoughts on the move to the SEC, what you may be looking forward to? Yes. Just your overall yeah. thoughts in general. Yeah, I think it's a great move. I think I think when you – I may be in the minority here, I don't know, but I just it seems like the Big 12 has been – you have a few teams every year, but it's pretty stagnant or has been compared to the SEC. And I think just the excitement – of being in the SEC, I think the recruiting advantage of being in the SEC, and more than anything else, I think you know if you're winning in the SEC, you are one of the top dogs, and there's no de there's no debating that. There's no, well, we beat this team, and so you know we should be here versus here. You know, you're playing the top teams in the nation, and if you're winning, you're a top team in the nation. There's there's really there's no arguments about that. So uh, that's that, and then secondly, just as a fan. I'm excited to go to some of these games and just, you know, take take my family, take my two boys. I've got a two boys, one's about to be eight and one's about to be five and and they love it. And so just to get to take them in an era where the Longhorns are are really at the top of um college football is, is exciting. And then to get to be in an atmosphere, an SEC type atmosphere most of the games is gonna be just exciting from a fan standpoint. Hey, we had a super chat. We got. We can't let you get out of here without the super oh. chat. Like, UT boy has a I'm question. Glad you said that because I didn't even see that until you said it. He says, "Give us the scouting report on the young boys." On the young shit, I'll I'll send in some flag football highlights for y'all. Very perfect. We'll play, we'll <laughs> no, play hey, I am I am I am coaching both of their teams, and so it's fun for me. It's you know, just growing up as a coach's kid. It's it was something I was always around, but it gives me the opportunity to get to be around my kids. Not just that, but to get to to get to share in those memories with them. And um, obviously, I'm passionate about football, but it's not about it's not about that. It's it's about just getting to spend time with them, doing something that we all love. But uh, I will say, my my oldest one, he I'm trying to get him into different sports right now. All he wants to do is play receiver and play football and run routes around the house. And so we typically got the mattresses set up and both of my boys were, were throwing diving passes most nights. <laughs> That's awesome. That Jack, see, awesome. Jackson, Jackson knows, he knows the recipe because there's a lot of people say, man, you, your kids are so talented. It's just, they just seem so natural. Well, how many times uh, did, of course it was easier for Jackson because he had me and or Jordan throwing him passes. Yeah. But uh, they would set the cushions out and run down the hall and make diving catches on cushions. And if they were awake, they were wanting to catch a ball. You can't wait till you're a teenager no. to learn how to have soft hands and learn how to position your body and all that stuff. It literally starts when you're young like that. And Jackson is, is pretty passionate about working with his kids. And the, the fun thing is that he they want to do it. They, they love it. They're eating up with it. And uh, so – Anyway, they're they're learning young, and for those of you that have grandkids or, or sons that are young, don't don't expect the junior high coach to start teaching them how to be a football player. You got to start working with them. If just throw them ping pong balls, throw them tennis balls, yeah. throw them anything you can, working on their hand eye coordination because uh, you you can't wait till you get pads on to start learning how to be a football player, especially a skilled player. Hey, yeah. what, and, what's great about what you just said is that means you have to put the phone down. You can't catch people right. in your phone. <laughs> <laughs> let me add. Let me add to that real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so, so for those that are dads out there that have boys, or like like my dad said, or you know, well, I'll say mostly as a dad, not so much as a granddad, but as a dad, you know, I and also I have a, a history, a past of. Uh, spent about four or five years where I was I was working exclusively with receivers across the state of Texas and and doing a lot of just different training and, and helping receivers out and a lot of times you see these kids that come as as high schoolers or as middle schoolers and they just look so stiff and unnatural and their hands are just they catch the ball like they've got two plates out in front of them you know and 
and it's it takes a long time to get people like that to get natural and the best thing that you can do as a as a dad i mean again i i'm i think there are much more important things in life than your kid being a good a good athlete i think more than that there's there's an eternal purpose to our life uh, but when we're talking about you want to be good at sports and you want your kids to be natural it doesn't have to be some stressful some thing where you're you know coaching your kids so much as just get a get a ball out and just start tossing it around and then make fun competitions and just make it all fun but but you, you're tossing passes to them you're throwing them passes and and what you notice is that more than anything else when you talk about catching the ball a lot of it has to do it's, it's really more with your eyes than it is with your hands and if you think about closing your eyes and imagine someone throwing a pass to you you mean how confident do you feel catching that pass you don't because your your eyes your eyes well your hands are like the hardware your eyes are like the software that are going to provide information to your hands and so it's going to it's going to allow the uh, the process of getting really natural at catching it's going to allow that to to be shortcutted and be a lot more natural if you start younger even if there's no coaching involved but you just have passes just tossing it to them because they're going to naturally develop that hand eye coordination and, and catching that so not that this is what this whole segment was about but since Definitely. you brought it up it's that's awesome. great. No, that was great. That's why we're here, man. That was awesome. Better than I would have explained it. Yeah, for sure. Phenomenal insight. No doubt about it. Well, Jackson, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much for surprising your dad and keeping it a secret. <laughs> yeah. We've been looking forward to it. And, and again, thank you for coming on. Of course. Awesome, guys. Hook them. Thanks for having me.